Hi guys! Here in section 6.1 and 6.2, when we first start learning about trigonometry, there are some special angles that we want to memorize the trig values for, um, and in particular, the sine value, the cosine value, and the tangent value for 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. These are our three special angles in quadrant one, and we're also going to throw in here the boundaries in quadrant one, which are, which are zero degrees and 90 degrees. So I'm going to set up this little table, and there is a really neat pattern for these values, and you could very, very quickly remember these values just by remembering this pattern. So I'm going to start with the sine of zero. I'm not starting with the values right now. I'm just going to go through and show you the pattern um, and leave some space because we're going to, there's more to the pattern and we're going to do a little bit of simplifying. So starting with sine of zero, start, starting in that box, I'm going to write the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then in the cosine row, I'm going to do that backwards. I'm going to say 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. For tangent, I am going to take both of those numbers and put them in a fraction. So I'm going to say 0 over 4, 1 over 3, 2 over 2, 3 over 1, 4 over 0. The next step is to put a square root symbol around every single number. Now I know not every single one of them needs it because some of them simplify uh, to the exact same thing or um, it doesn't really make any sense, but just to uh, make the pattern easier to remember, we just say throw a square root around everything. Now in your sine and your cosine rows, you're going to put everything over 2. And that is the pattern. Now a lot of this is going to simplify, so I'm not done. I'm going to draw this one more time right underneath, and I'm going to write the final values simplified. So sine of theta, when my theta is 0, oops, 30, 45, 60, and 90. And then we also have cosine and tangent. So back from our original table, the square root of 0 is 0, and 0 divided by 2 is 0. So the number that we've put in this box is pretty much the same thing as 0. So the sine of 0 is 0. For the sine of 30, the square root of 1 is 1, and 1 divided by 2, that's just a half, and we're going to leave it as a fraction. The sine of 45... Square root of 2 doesn't simplify. Uh, 2 is not a perfect square, and we're not going to change these to decimals, so I'm just going to leave that as square root 2 over 2. And the same exact thing for the sine of 60. 3 is not a perfect square. There's no way to simplify that, so I'm just going to leave it as the square root of 3 over 2. But sine of 90 will simplify because the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 divided by 2 is 1, so the sine of 90 is 1. So that's the sign of our three special angles, but we've also thrown in there 0 and 90 because their values follow along nicely with the pattern that we've just made. 
Now the cosine values, remember we made the cosine values exactly the same way, we just did it backwards. So I'm going to repeat these same numbers, I'm just going to do it backwards. So 1 square root 3 over 2, square root 2 over 2, a half, and 0. And then for tangent, we need to simplify the values we had just a minute ago, and those are going to be a little bit different. For tangent of 0, we get 0 over 2, which is 0. For the tangent of 30, we get 1 over the square root of 3. And usually you're going to see that rationalized. So if you multiply the top and the bottom by square root of 3, you'll actually get the square root of 3 over 3. For tangent of 45, we've got the exact same number in the top and the bottom of the fraction. And when you divide a number by itself, the result is 1. For tangent of 60, we've got the square root of 3 divided by essentially just 1, so that's square root of 3. And then for tangent of 90, we've got 0 in the denominator, and dividing by 0 is undefined. So the tangent of 90 is undefined. So this is our table for sine, cosine, and tangent of our three special angles in quadrant 1, as well as those boundary angles where quadrant 1 starts and where quadrant 1 ends. They follow this really easy pattern. And then if we just simplify the values, once we get the pattern written out, we can very quickly have all of those values in front of us to use and uh, do whatever we need to with them. So I hope this is helpful. If you've never seen these before, if you've never seen this method before, uh, I hope you'll try it. Um, there are some other ways to do this, but if, hopefully if you've never seen this one before, um, it will be helpful.